Well, good morning, everyone. Got another late jump today on it, but, you know, we're going to try and make up for it. We got a 1,500-mile trip in the Fela 747. And, uh, well, you know what? Let's get on down to the ground and uh, see what we can see with her. We're going from Hong Kong, a very cloudy, rainy Hong Kong, over to Bangladesh. So... Let's see here. Let's just kind of zoom in here. It'll pick up speed here in a minute, but y'all can see the clouds. We are in release candidate five. And I've updated the uh, Felis to 1.2.0.5, as you may have seen in the email. Clouds are looking really good right now. As we get into some IMC popping out, uh, not so sure I like the rain effect on the ground, but you know, that's to each their own if they like that or not. But uh, here we are, folks, in Hong Kong as we zoom into the cargo ramp. And there sits our chariot today to whisk us off to Bangladesh. Cathay Pacific Cargo's Bravo Hotel, uh, Mike Fox, I believe it was. We'll find out once we get in the cockpit. But uh, the Silver Bullet, as the livery was called in the real world, get the idea why. But uh, yeah, it's an old Cathay plane that they reconfigured for cargo. So, without further ado, welcome aboard, folks. We're uh, getting ready. The plane's pretty much ready to go. APU fired up, aircraft's loaded. We got some final checks before we can do the uh, engine start. So, recapping real quick, the battery's on, the standby power is normal. Um, like I said, now the APU is on. These are the three gauges of the APU, so you can tell they're on. The bleed air is on, the, that we're on the gens. We got the air conditioning, uh, cooling things down in here. We've done all our fire checks, hydraulic checks, fuel checks. The only thing I need to do, because we always get uh, caught up on it with the uh, checks, is get the boost pumps up and running. Uh, we've done all of our landing gear checks. We've done our crossfeed checks. We have plenty of oil in the engines. And over here, we've done our uh, stall warning. And all over here, tests and window heats on. And now, and, uh, welcome, welcome, 125. Yes, it's a 747 day. So, uh, lights are on, and we are here. All that's left to do is close up door one, which we'll do right now. And start in on the checklists. Before start checklist, please. Gear lever and lights. Down and check. Brakes. Parked. Start levers. Off. Radios. On and check. Flight control hydraulic power. On. INS. Check and nav. Compasses. Slaved. Window heat. On. Seat belts and no smoking. On. Emergency lights. Armed. Hey, this one Exterior will skip. Lights. Damn. Flight instruments. Check. Altimeters and clocks. One, zero, two, one. Set and cross check. Radio INS switches. Radio. Radar and transponder. Standby. Indicator lights. Check. Engine and wing anti ice. Off. Stall warning. Check. Mock airspeed warning. Check. Auto brakes. Check and off. Body gear steering. Arm. Anti skid. On. Autopilot and flight director. Check and off. Takeoff warning. 
Hold on. Check. Auto flight enunciators. Check. GPWS. Check. Instrument warning. Check. Flight director computer selectors. Check. Instrument source selectors. Normal. Reserve brake valve. Closed. Spoilers. Down. Static selectors. Normal. Oxygen mask and regulator. Check and emergency off. Brake pressure. Check. Stabilizer trim. Check and on. Rudder and aileron trim. Check. Checklist completed. All right. Did pretty good. The reason we skipped the uh, exterior lights, what they're looking for, folks, is we're pushing back, so the beacon needs to be on. We're not fully ready yet to push back, although we're really close. Uh, we got one big step to do we'll do after we make sure the flight engineer is ready. Battery on. APU panel. Check. Auxiliary power. Check. Engine oil quantity. Check. Fuel quantity. One, two, six, four, three, eight pounds. Fuel panel. Check and set. Pressurization controls. Check and set. Bleed controls. Let's see. Check and set. Hydraulic quantity. Check. EPR computer. Ah, uh, this. All right, we're going to skip that. We'll explain in a minute. Hang on. Circuit breakers. Check. Indicator lights. Check. Electrical panel. Check and set. Air conditioning controls. Ah, uh, this. Check and set. Fire control and wing overheat panels. Check and set. Equipment cooling. Check. Passenger oxygen. Check. Hydraulic panel. Check and set. Fuel jettison panel. Check. Crew oxygen. On. Oxygen mask and regulator. Check and emergency off. ADPs off. Checklist completed. All right, we skipped one here. Let me get over here so it's easy to read. The EPR com uh, computer. They uh, In this configuration, folks, they like go around. Uh, we use takeoff dry. Now, you're all going, huh? All right, here's the EPR computer right here. Okay, you have TOD, which is not top of descent. Continuous, climb, cruise, go around. TOD means takeoff dry. There used to be on them a takeoff wet situation. And what those differences are is one, water injected. One, not water injected. Takeoff dry is that one. And that's the one we're going to use. Uh, everything else is set and ready to go. The only thing left on our plate, and I left it for you all, putting the route in. Oh, yeah, I put a company route in. Or there, oh, no, I didn't. Stand by. I know I have it. I just haven't put it in yet. All right, let's take two on that one. Route and boom. Hey, there it is. <laughs> all right, so now you're all are going, Raymond. Uh, I know a lot of you out there that fly long haul out of Hong Kong go, never heard of this one. Well, it's that one departure, folks. Granted, the Beacle was the one that they used to fly, but I guess this one is strictly for those kind of aircraft, and this one falls into it, that don't fly RNAV. 
So what we'll do is we'll go out to Porpa. We'll brief this here in a second down to Raymond, back to CH. We'll probably do a left-hand turn and come into CH and head on our merry way. So, but we'll brief that here in a minute. So let's take a look at the next page so you get an idea of what we're doing. All right, not a lot of fixes it looks like folks, but what the routing basically is, is uh, we're gonna be doing the Raman one alpha departure to Raman to CH, which is uh, one of the VORs right nearby Hong Kong International. <clears throat> to POU, grab the uh, A599 to Golf Yankee Alpha, from Golf Yankee Alpha, we'll head towards Wubel, then direct Adbag, direct Tosum, direct LLP, direct uh, DAC, which is our arrival airport. Pretty simple. Everything looks right in there. So let's go back to F plan. Only thing missing is our departure. Seven right. Let's see if they, they do. Execute. Let's see how it looks. All right. At the same time, we're going to also do a quick pre-brief here. Okay. Here's our routing out of here, folks. You can kind of get a little bit of the uh, sense of what we're doing here. I'm going to kind of zoom in. We're going to go... Orpa, below 5,000. Hang on a second. Sorry about that. Didn't want to cough on y'all. So, Porpa, uh, Porpa at 5,000, direct Raymond. Like I said, I think we're going to do a left-hand turn out over the bay here and head to CH, then on course. That's how it looks. How it looks on paper. Zoom down a little here. All right, so, boink. All right, so we're on the cargo pads. We'll come off heading 074 to Porpa. Again, we can we have to be above 205, but can't exceed 220. We'll make the uh, right-hand turn to Raymond, and then off Raymond, like I said, we'll do the left, come back to CH to get on course. All right, so real quick while we're here, we'll do our departure brief. So transition is 9,000. All right, so first thing I need to do over here. Okay, origin two, okay. Arnav, transition 9,000. Next page, uh, 38,000, shows us our progress now. All right, so Raman to CH and then on course. All right, now a lot of this we'll do as best we can. We got to, we actually have to cross Orpa. So we'll go cross Porpa, which is seven miles off the ISR ILS. Start our turn to uh, go direct Por uh, Raymond. And direct Raymond is not 003. I don't have a good heading off of here. We'll, we'll make it happen, though, folks. No worries. And then, like I said, we'll loop back on, hopefully, a left-hand turn to CH. The bad thing is we don't have the nav displays to work this out, but if we had the nav displays, then technically we could fly the Beagle and uh, disregard it altogether. <laughs> so, and that just takes us out over where uh, Kaitak is. All right, so there we go, folks. Now we're fully ready to go. 
Uh, set this on the progress page for now. You're on the legs page for now. All right. And uh, we're uh, raring and ready to go. Uh, we'll go ahead and get rid of this finishing. Oop, I got rid of it on my screen altogether. Nav graph go away. Load sheet for today. Now, it shows 322 people, folks. The big thing for us to be concerned with is our payload. 70,840 pounds of payload, cargo, assume. Bringing us up to uh, 457,529. Stand by. And uh, I think it's best to show it here. Would be best if it wouldn't do that. So there's our zero fuel weight matching. Uh, block weight, takeoff weight. Fuel estimated to 126,670, which is a little more than what we're showing we need. We'll take it. So that's what we have there. And we are, again, folks, to help you with the plane here, um, load calculator, key on this word here, calculates only. Refuel fuels the plane. Payload loads the plane. Instant refuel for refuel. You can instant board and load if you want, or you can click board and load to do it realistically. And I'm here to tell you they do straggle into the plane. All right, the only thing left to do here, folks, is uh, get this bird fired up. So let's call better push pack and uh, we'll push facing uh, west. Router cockpit, please show me where you want to go. Ground to cockpit, tow is driving up. All right, folks, we are waiting on our pushback. So, again, real quick, you got pilot, co-pilot in the front. The guy that does all the work is behind him. He is your flight engineer, and he gets to manage all of this, folks. He's the one that gets all the fun. He gets to play with all the bells and whistles. All right. Let's uh, come up here, see what our next checklist is after start. Okay. One last look. Okay. All doors and hatches are closed. Ready to connect. Cockpit to ground. Remove the chocks. We'll talk about that page in just a second. It's already set. Removed. Okay, here he comes in. Beacons on. I find this really discon disheartening from a sim toolkit. And folks, if you see it and I don't, uh, when you set up a flight plan under Lido or the flight plan format to be printed out, there is no headings on it. No courses, no nothing. So if you know where they're hiding, love to hear from you. I just can't find them. It's kind of aggravating. 
because I'd really like to know what we need to turn to. I'm planning on turning to 180, but we'll see uh, if that's appropriate or not. All right, so he's ready to go. We're ready to go, folks. And look at that. We're at 30 minutes. Let's do it. Okay, beacon's on. Hang on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Uh, on behalf of the entire crew, welcome aboard the Boeing 747 Classic. We will depart shortly after we have our clearance and the cabin crew is finished with their preparations. Uh, for now, I wish you a pleasant flight and I will be back during the flight with further flight information. Parking brake released. Starting pushback, and you may start engines. All right. First, we got to open the start valve. Ready to start the engines. Ready for engine start. Okay. Then I switch to where I'm looking out. Now, I think by default your numpad is set up where one puts you like this, two down here, three over here. I don't think I updated this much. This one I did just because I like this view better to see everything. Four for over here, five for the fuel half of the panel, which looks good and ready to go. Nine is up here, seven's back here in the back. Eight is your overhead. So I start here and kind of just set up so I can see engines and my engine start panel. Today we're going to use system two, which is a little more difficult. I may have to go to the overhead a lot. Starting engine three. Starting engine three. Start of helve over. Engine three is not gonna start very easily with the packs on. Now you see it going. And he'll tell us when it's at 20%. 20% and 2. Fuel on. Light up. Starter off. And when it stabilizes, he'll sell. And then we can do the next one. Engine stabilized. Okay. I am going to go up. Okay, I told you we're doing system two. Starting engine four. Hold it till starter valve, open. starter valve opens. You can see it winding up here. Not so much in front, but he'll tell us again. Twenty percent and two. Fuel on. There we Lights go. Up. Now you see them rolling up. Starter off. We're going to start one and two together. Engine stabilized. Again, it's click down. Starting engine one. Start a valve open. Starting engine two. Start a valve open. Operation complete. Set parking brake. Parking brake set. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. Twenty percent and two. Fuel on. Twenty percent and two. Light up. Starter off. One. Fuel on. Light up. Engine stabilized. Starter off. Engine stabilized. All right, folks. That's how you get it started. Now let's come over here and get our engines on Gen Bus. So now, what is on the controlling electrics currently in the plane 
are all four engines Cur uh, currently controlling pressurization, air, and all related systems to the, and and has been the uh, engines. As right. we'll soon as I do this, now the engines have it. All right, we're going to step out here for just a second. Wait on him. Whoop, yeah, he'll be on this side, I believe. Yeah, he said on the right. And all we're doing is looking for the guy. He's basically holding our pens. And he'll be on his way. All right, so let's get our packs back on. Get the air flowing. And... APU's off the bleed. There's your confirmation electricity is flowing in the bus and air. You can hear it now flowing over us. And I want to just check our set sound wise. Let's look at the All right, uh, let's see. Get up here. We'll turn the uh, probe whoop, not test on. We'll go ahead and run with the uh, anti-ice on the engines and our tests. Cabin crew, arm slides. All doors are closed and armed. Now to give you an idea, you can hear her or you can keep it in the background. All right, we're ready to taxi. We do have a couple checklists. After start checklist. Flight recorder. On. Start switch. Off. Beacon light. On. Brake pressure. Check. Start levers. Idle detent. Engine and the eyes. On. Electrical panel. Check. Back valve. Open. Dual warning light. Out. Hydraulic panel. Check. Flight recorder. On. Off start checklist completed. Okay, let's go to the next one, which is taxi. All right. All right, stave trim. I need to look over real quick before we hit that. Uh, 3.4. Okay. I'm going to go ahead just yes, so I don't get get upset. Okay. Here, get these on. Dude, chill out. Pull firmly on the right cord, all 
Okay, what I did, folks, set the pitch, optimal climb three, four, and back to checklist. Okay, flaps, probe heats on, flight controls. That's the last thing. Now, I've got them hidden to unhide them where you see BHMF. It'll say maybe something different. They're back. And a great gauge right over here. Watch the needles move. Always make sure they center. Okay, and once you're done, you can get rid of it. I just kind of go through y'all dampers, fuel heat, totalizer, aft cargo heat. Uh, normal. Here we go. Taxi checklist, please. Flaps. Flaps 20. Flaps 20. Take off data, EPR, and air speed bugs. Set and cross check. Stabilize the trim. Set in green band. Probe heat. On. Flight controls. Check. Yaw dampers. Check. Seat belts and shoulder harness. Check. APU. Off. Fuel heat. Off. Totalizer and gross weight. Set. Flight engineer and pilot panels. Check. Aft cargo heat. Normal. Seat belts and shoulder harness. Check. Taxi checklist completed. Parking brake released. Hang on a second, folks. I almost did it again. Oh, we're going to do this. All right. Hang on a second, folks. Cockpit to ground. Put the chocks on. Yeah, some of the ACARS programs require that. Remove the chocks. Chocks removed. Now let's try this again. Ready. All right, folks, we have a cabin ready of 11 people because that's all that really would ever be on this plane at the most. Okay, let's just taxi on up to the taxiway.
Now, as I said in the uh, opening comments, folks, to each their own. I'll put that caveat in here. I am not, and I can hear you all yelling at me, I am not a fan of the water effects on the ground yet. Um, Vegas, it actually looks like you're landing into a lake. Um, now, that was, of course, release candidate one, possibly one of the betas. We will be revisiting them soon um, to see if that changed. But uh, just not a fan of this. It just doesn't. I don't know. Is it taking away from anything? Not really, but I don't know. And like I said, in Vegas, it looked like you were. I mean, I couldn't see the runway for the texturing of the water at all. And I almost landed on the taxiway because of it. So, and it wasn't texturing because of concrete versus, you know, the way Seattle and a couple of other airports are set up where it they do line up on the wrong entity. They line up on taxiways instead of the runway till they get in close enough and hopefully don't have to do a go-around. Okay, folks, sorry. My uh, headset cord was uh, driving me bonkers here. All right, so we're taxiing out. All checks but the before takeoff have been done. And uh, we'll get those done here uh, as we're tack. Matter of fact, might as well tackle them right now. I will let you know I am skipping body gear. So... Uh, that way we can call ready to go at the end of the runway. Hang on. Always have one that's hard to get. All right, here we go. Now, you're wondering, why is he up, left, down, right, still visible here? Folks, that is the localizer. So, uh, we're about, we're going to be flying ISR out to uh, um, Orpa, which is 7.0 on the DME, uh, and then turning to Raymond, and then to CH. Is CH get that up on twelve thirty? Okay. All right. Here we come to the end of the runway. Hong Kong traffic. Uh, Cathay one o four heavy. Departing seven right Raymond one a departure. Roger, clear for takeoff seven right. Cafe 104 heavy. Okay, hold up right here. Uh, boosts check, cruise speeds check. Cadet Rand 07, welcome aboard. Thanks for the follow. We sure appreciate you coming aboard. Cabin alert. Uh, we got to do that real quick. Uh, hope you enjoy the flight to to Dhaka. Well, Bangladesh. We'll keep it that way because I've been told I don't pronounce a lot of things right. All right. T A R A. Go to radar. There we go. Mission body gear packs closed. We'll get on the runway for that. Here we go. Let's run it. Before 
for takeoff checklist. Icing considerations. Check. Cabin alert. Check. Transponder. Check. Ignition. Flight start. Boarding is steering. Hold on. And we'll get that here in a second. I'm going to taxi before answering for the most part here. Turning the packs off for takeoff. Okay, pack valves off. Ghost. Registration mode selector. Auto. Fuel boost pumps. On. Cross feed valves. Check. Before takeoff checklist completed. Here we go, folks. Okay, we appear to be stable. It almost sounds like, folks, if you've seen the movie Strategic Air Command, sounds like that airplane winding up here. V1. Rotate. V2. Okay, again, we're waiting for seven here. Flaps five. Down to level off.
Our max speed here is 220, so we'll go ahead and give it a little. One. Okay, add five minutes probably to that timer. Okay, we're just uh, after Raymond, we can start climbing again, folks. And speeding up. Initial climb altitude will be thirty-eight thousand. Okay, we're coming over Raymond right now. We're off Raymond. We'll go a little further, and then what I'm going to do is uh, first come down to here, set us back into EPR, which could have changed that. Okay, set our climb. Now I'm going to bring us back to 360, so that way I know we can do this. Do it from this panel. And I'm going to go direct. Okay. 
Okay. All right, folks. Nine thousand, we set uh, twenty nine ninety two. Real quick, I want to check pressurization set, everything good. Climbing out pretty decently here. Looks like we're headed direct to CH. 10,000 feet. 10,000. Uh, forgot what our numbers were. All right, there we go, folks. CH, we crossed and uh, headed to POU. Let's make sure. Looks like we are. Five miles to CH. Okay, got uh, one more thing I want to get in here. 1410, that's why I'm confused. There we go. Okay, we're off CH. Next one, E G Y A. You know what? Let's run the uh, after takeoffs, and then we're done with this.
Hope you enjoyed. That is the takeoff sequence. Uh, for those who have been with Flying with Mike from the start, it took an hour and two minutes to get through 18,000 and uh, on our way. So we're getting a little better with the welcome aboard. That's the whole key behind it, folks, is getting this plane as close to ready to start up before starting the stream. Now, if you all want to see... Uh, full startups and all just realize the start to the stream will take close to an hour to go through all the checks that need to be done before the checks we did here on uh, online but for now folks we are on our way uh eta into um our airport is Bear with me a second, folks. Uh, three hours, 21 minutes, but that'll come down a little bit more as we, one, get further into the route, and, of course, higher up. So, sit back, relax, welcome aboard, and I hope you enjoy the uh, flight. And again, Cadet Rand 07, thanks for following with us. Hope uh, you uh, uh, enjoyed the uh, takeoff departure out of Hong Kong and hopefully equally uh, looking forward to the arrival into uh, uh, H uh, Hotel Golf. Uh, man, I forgot. It's, it's changed. That's the problem, folks. Um... Uh, second folks my nav graph charts are updating already 
There we go. It is Victor Gulf Hotel Sierra. I call it Dhaka, Bangladesh. I don't know if that's truly the name. Um, hopefully I haven't started yet another incident. You know, we've only started half a dozen or so this week. Hey, what's another one? Uh, so uh, we're on our way, folks. Uh, current ETA. Hang on a second. Where is some toolkit? Because... I'll need to check that one out as well. See if I can at least get this one right. This looks easy. Ping Zoo. Uh, and then we'll head over to Gayo. And then on our way, folks, we'll be clearing out of the Hong Kong, Guangzhou area and uh, en route to our destination. So hope you enjoy the ride. Hope uh, Cadet Rand 07, you enjoyed it as well. Questions, comments, folks. Chat room has been wide open from the time we started the stream till now. So welcome aboard and uh, uh, we'll see what kind of trouble we can get into in the next three hours or so. Now to Gay Yo. And then onward. Um, let me, uh, now, some neat things here. Let me show a little bit. Now that we're airborne, we can show a lot of this. Now, first off, folks, the Jaggies up here you're seeing with X Plane 12, that's because of my settings. Um, I'm running a. Uh, NVIDIA 2080 Super uh, card, so I can't be fully dialed up, but I can do quite a bit. And uh, so there's my settings for y'all. Uh, I'm not ashamed to show them to you, so I am going to get Jaggies. I know that. Uh, X-Plane guys, if you want to let me know what I can tune, I would sure love to know that, but you know, for now, Hey, you saw the frame rates, folks. Here, let's pop over here again. We're getting 45. Hey, I'm happy with that, folks. While we're here, look at those clouds. They're actually, you know, folks, if you'd have been with X-Plane from the Beta 1, I think I came in around 2 or 4, somewhere in there. Uh, these are stark improvements. And all I can do is just say great job laminar uh 3d clouds first generation with x plane and uh by the time we've got through 14 betas and now into the fifth release candidate they look spectacular now my only comment about the clouds now that i see it out here I still see this pyramiding icon happening out here. Uh, not sure what causes that, but uh, yeah, and it's you know, and it only seems to show up in its 
in like this out here in the Far East. Um, I'm trying to remember when we went from Honolulu to L.A. if it showed up there. And that would have been in a beta, by the way. But they're not as... I mean, they used to be very pronounced... You'd call them pyramids out here. So, I mean, folks, the clouds have, have gone from egg carton looks to what you see out here thumbs up i can put up with this and i've flown through these pyramids it's not like they're gonna throw your plane to the ground um i just don't know how your file is reading the weather file to generate what we see you know there's a whole lot i know that goes into it little probably hundreds of thousands of lines um but yeah Folks, these clouds are, these are really good for default. Now, I don't know, bus fussers, what that looks like over there. But to watch the improvement over the last three months. Has it been three months we've been running? However long we've been running these candidates, folks, our candidates and betas, Amazing progress, amazing. So and I have no idea what their plans are for when it will be actually out of these early release features and into the general, whatever they could call that. I thought release candidate was gonna be that. <laughs> so shows you what I get for thinking. Um, but yeah, I mean, outstanding with the clouds. Frame rates, I watched a guy, like I said yesterday morning at work before I went home, um, talking about how horrible and unacceptable the frame rates are. They look great to me. So, I mean, uh, like I said, 2080 NVIDIA card, super. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. It really, I mean, do I wish I could crank up my settings? Yeah, duh. Uh, I remember when FSX came out in Microsoft, and oh my gosh. That actually took a new computer to make it finally run halfway decent. This one has it. Again, applause for uh, Laminar. Okay, I just glad I glanced down here. We're getting close to our mock number. So I am gonna go ahead and switch us in right now to where our climb will be pitch wise adjusting for the mock number instead of the indicated airspeed number. And then once we reach 0.50, I am going to switch it to Bach up here.
Alright, we're just trying to get the mock to climb again. Okay, we're almost leveled off, folks. And that should help us to get up to 0.85. Uh, and then I'll run a few other quick items I run. There we go. Get us leveled at 38 even. So we're in cruise. All right, so we got altitude on hold. We're off on the climb. And let me...
I'm now starting uh, the maker of this livery, folks, had three or four of them that you could download each uh, either nice and cheap. I still got that. So. See how that does on our airspeed. Right, I did bring them up to one and totally forgot about it. You can't see them from here, folks. It's all the slats that come out in one. Wow. Cloud ones, I'd have to say. Again, the bulk, not. Take off the active sky lenses, folks. Coming out of a box, flying it. Oh, an FSX users, I believe it was, or was it Century of Flight for both? Um, remember, we couldn't fly on bad scent weather. This is not bad scent weather. Above 24,000. We had to fly on the phone. Active sky. So, folks, again, for default weather on bad zone, it's great. Now, if I want to get technical and say, well, it doesn't look like active sky, well, it should. I didn't pay for active sky. So, again, release candidate 5, in my opinion, looks Great. Frame rates look great, and if you don't believe me, okay, we're hovering in the 30s up here with all these clouds. Not bad. I know some of y'all are expecting 2 million frames per second up there. The expectations listening to y'all. Hey, as long as it keeps that sim going, I'm okay. Look at that. We drop in the cockpit, which usually is worse, and it actually improved. And control, uh, what did I do? Control shift F, folks, in X-Plane 12 will give you that. Or have a tab, which is free. Or, if the aircraft has an EFB, see if they have a frame rate thing on it. Most of them do. I will admit there are some that don't. Again, folks, it's hard to complain. This is a pretty complex plane, too, folks. This isn't taking the uh, default C90 up. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, com it's got some complexities to it that, you know, you got to stay on top of, but. All right, we're having troubles again maintaining. I mean, why am I having such a hard time here keeping Mach 8.5? This is not an X-Plane 12 issue, in my opinion. This is actually Felis, again, bringing the plane up to what will be the release camp. Boy, I didn't remember having this much trouble in X-Plane 11. 
I stuck it at Mach 8.5 and she stayed. Maybe a combination of atmosphere and doing this to me, but I just thought it was rock solid at 0.85 from New York to Miami that one trip I did. And, oh, I'm barely reaching it half the time. Let's see if it wants to hold it. I got to get into the manual and read about this. I know the RTRN and the de uh, decreaser is what I call it. I like I said, I got to read it to make sure what I'm calling them is actually accurate. Okay, we're starting to be more what I would call on to. By the way, folks, we did update this uh, prior to stream. That's why we ran a little long. We had the. Uh, uh, skunk crafts updater running now for those of you going what are you talking about if you go up here to plugins first off <laughs> let's do this first off uh, what you're gonna need to do for those of you not familiar with this is not what I was looking for. That's also not what I'm looking for. Well, anyway, look up Skunk Crafts Updater uh, on the X-Plane forum. It'll get you where you uh, need to do. Let's see if this does it here. Anyway, once you have that in there, it'll actually load into your plugins. Now, don't be in any aircraft that up, you know, basically what I was told and uh, I've heard a lot of other people reiterate, fire up the sim in the Cessna 172. Okay, the one that comes from X-Plane, Cessna 172, not the G-1000 just the bare 172 
then go up here, click Skunk Graphs, check for updates, and you'll be able to get up to 1.2.0.5, I think is what we're at right now. Yes. And uh, all I had to do is look at my screen. I'm thinking from my memory, folks. Hey, that's not bad for someone of my age. Hey. Um, and then update it. Once it's updated, it'll you know reload it into your sim. It'll then ask for your download your a key you can get that from x plane store under your account plug it in reload the plane you're good to go uh, but yeah i am now running on it's actually pretty decent uh we're pretty close now to 0.85 not sure i'm pretty sure this is now completely useless But anyway, uh, that being your airspeed and uh, uh, set, uh, that's okay. We'll, you know, we'll get there, folks. Um, and then you're good to go with the latest, greatest uh, Fila 747. Uh, the new thing, and you can put these new things in the old one in 11. Uh, that being the new things that come for you. Here, let me show you a couple. I can't show you. Doggone it, we're in here. Hopefully I remember to show you on the ground. But basically, aside from having door 1L uh, and your cargo doors on the uh, first officer side, you now have all of the passenger doors active. So you can actually open 1L, 2L, your right doors for your catering and so forth. Um, cargo guys, still no nose lifter, still no side door up on the captain side. But you know what? It's still like, do I need to say any more? Still looks good. The mod is still there, folks, if you want it. I did for you plug the window. So, and a guy that's good with texturing will include the cargo area. See, there's the cargo door. I've never seen this in use. I'd love to know why there's tracks. My only guess is that you shout and slide over. I don't know. That's just stupid thinking of flying with Mike. But, uh, that tarnished look to it actually looks pretty good, folks. Also, I've seen now a CF mod out there instead of just some rats. So, you know, it's teacher own. They're coming, folks. Too many people get in a hurry when these new sims come out and think, oh my gosh, why are they taking forever? All I gotta do is look to, P to Bus Fuss and PMDG. It's three years, folks, for PMDG to come out over there. It takes time. One, the sim had to be molded more to airline instead of GA like it initially started. And for PMDG to be able to figure out what it can manipulate to make what PMDG does so well work so well. Same thing's going to happen here with X-Plane 12, folks. It's going to take the developers. Now, those that jumped in right off the bat with the betas may have a leg up on the other people because they've been in the water longer. I don't know how that works, folks. But you know what? <laughs> I was patient in FSX. Boy, did that take forever for people to come over. Not people, as in you and I simmers. I'm talking about developers. That took a 
really long time. I was really amazed at how long. So, to sit there and I've heard so many complaints out there. How long? When is this people going to come? When is this going to come? Folks, they'll come. It may take three years. It took PMTG that long. So... I plan to give some more uh, flights to the uh, default aircraft here soon, the A330 and the Citation. And uh, we'll see uh, how well those aircraft coming out of the box are like. We've seen Zebo. I've run across an error with Zebo. Now, Release 5 may have fixed it. Who knows? I lost control of my trim on the uh, flight into uh, Fairbanks a couple days ago. Total would not move up or down on my uh, uh, stick over here, or I die, you know, I coming down here and trying to get it to move. It was basically dead. And that was Zebo, folks. What caused it? I have no idea. I even turned off the yaw damper, knowing that has nothing to do with the elevator. Um, what the heck? And that didn't work. So, we had a max. That's what it was. No, just kidding. Sorry, Boeing. Please, hold back the arrows. <laughs> All right. Well, folks, we are going to just sit back, relax with y'all, enjoy the ride. Like I said, I'm monitoring the chat area. And uh, let's start seeing what we're looking forward to. And oh, Mitar available. Oh, yippee ki yay. That's because I put it in wrong. <laughs> That'll do it all the time. All right, so we're looking at 260 on the winds, kind of light. 1,500 meters per drizzle. Huh. Fun arrival coming in, folks. 1,200 meter visibility. Yeah, we are... We're in for some fun in Dadaka, so Hazaret International Airport.
Alright folks, we're back uh, talking with you. We're uh, level at 38,000. Uh, trying to maintain 0.85 and just, well, it's just not wanting to. And I, for the life of me, can't figure out why this airplane has so much trouble at this. I mean, I've got my throttles floored, even though I don't, well, they have a little to do with it. Got her in mock, as you can tell on the uh, auto throttle there. And the uh, EPR frats, and uh, it is just always a struggle for this plane. Now, albeit, okay, a little bit uh, on the positive side, yeah, we're into about a 58 knot Ishwa direct headwind or more. Matter of fact, we can come down here using this one, I can pull the wind. at 83 knot now so so I mean we are battling a stiff wind I'll give it that and I, I'll give it this right here 405 um, but why we have such a struggle here is really beyond me so but again not as familiar with this as the 747-400. Mind you, I haven't flown that in well over a year. Um, I've heard some major updates came to the Sparks 43 project. That's free out there, folks. Um, aside from it becoming compliant with X-Plane 12. Uh, but yeah. We're now at point eight five more of on target. So uh, we'll see how this maintains. Um, but yeah, we are working our way over there. We got about a two hour, 15 minute ETA. A uh, little bit of a long haul here, folks. Nothing like what we did to Alaska a few weeks ago. And uh, coming up next week may even be a slightly longer haul. Uh, let me take a look at it. Yep. 
Yeah, we're looking at about a five-hour haul taking us into Dubai. Uh, now, I am also... I have some reasoning behind that, folks, why I'm pushing so hard. Um, every year... Oh, good Lord. It goes back at least five, if not ten years. So, well outside when I was streaming. Um... I would always plan a flight sometime the week of Christmas to Christmas City. Trying to get as close to Bethlehem as we in the flight sim, as we in the flying community can without a helicopter. Um, I can get there because there are no airports in Jerusalem um, or Bethlehem. <clears throat> so I try to get into Tel Aviv. Um, this year we're going to come in from the east usually we come across the pond hit a place in Europe and then go down break it up a little although I have run straight to Tel Aviv it's, it's, a, it's a long haul but uh, this year like I said we're going to head to Dubai and then Dubai in uh the aircraft of choice right now to bring us in is Zebo, but I may change that up. Just be aware, and we'll see how that all transpires. Um, yeah, I've always, that's one of my Christmas things, if you will, that I fly into Israel. Um, not going to make any... Um, denials if, that, if that's the word I'm looking for but uh, folks I am a Christian and uh, one of my big to do things on if you want to call it a bucket list I don't I call it I want to do this because I feel I need to do this is get to Israel uh, not a Jewish person no uh, uh, like I said a Christian uh or as they called it, the movement, uh, when uh, just after Christ died. Um, and I want to get back and, one, see the heritage of Christianity, Judaism, um, there in the Jerusalem, Israel, the whole area. I, wanna, I would love to walk where Jesus walked, take tours and all of that good stuff. Not going to hide it from anyone. I, that is high on my list. Um, and uh, I hope to uh, fulfill it here soon. Uh, means a lot to me. I love to see the Jordan River, and I've had a lot of bad. You ain't missing anything. Well, yeah, I am, in my opinion. I mean, this is where Jesus was baptized, and the Israelites crossed from their 40 year trek through the uh, wilderness into Israel to then take Jericho. Um, it's important, folks. And uh, the whole trip is important to me. So that's why when we're on these longer, even some, I try to do them even on the shorter ones, even if it's just a few words. That's why I try to do a little, uh, you know, bring the word with us here in the cockpit. Um, and that's why I've set timers to it as well, so that the uh, verse of the day does come up roughly about every 15, 20 minutes. Today's is a carry-on from yesterday. Yesterday's, if you remember, um, well, let me just pull it up. <laughs> Instead of saying, well, if you remember, let me just pull up yesterday's uh, verse. Hang on. Excuse me, this cold is just... Uh. Okay, it used to be super simple on this site to go back to the day before. There's another way. Oh, yeah. We're basically still in the same chapter. 
the same chapter that we talked about the Z Zachariah and his disbelieving questioning of the uh, angel Gabriel to Mary's you know really me kind of asking of the angel uh, qu a question about what she's about to go through uh, don't be afraid, Mary. I have found you have found favor with God. You will be with child. Give birth to a son. You are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called Son Most High. The Lord God, he will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob or Israel forever. That was yesterday's. Today's, as you just saw come up, um, we pick up a few verses later where Mary is with Elizabeth and uh, basically sings a song of uh, this wonderful um, miracle that uh, she is uh, experiencing, let alone the miracle that Elizabeth is experiencing uh, with John the Baptist in her womb, who would become John the Baptist, I should say. So Mary, today's verse, is actually, uh, when you go and do hashtag uh, verse of the day, it'll say Luke 146, well, Yes and no. It's actually Luke 46 and 47 through 47, sorry, and verse 49 make up the verse for today. You had to do a little, little digging, not much, but uh, basically today's verse is, my soul glorifies the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Um, like I said, folks, this is a bigger part of a bigger uh, dialogue, if you will, a song, as the most uh, tr translations will present it, from 46 to 53, verses 46 through 53 of chapter 1 in uh, Dr. Luke's account. <clears throat> so uh, and really that is the true devotion that when something as epic as what's happening to Mary um, happens that we, that we praise that we praise God our Father for these things um she is about to give birth to Emmanuel, the, the one person the Israelites have been waiting for for so, so long to take him. However, most of them will miss the fact that Emmanuel came and then ultimately that they would put to death Emmanuel. So Mary's song goes like this, and again, you'll you'll hear the ringing out of the verse of the day, but it goes on, like I said, till verse uh, uh, 53, actually all the way down to verse 55. So Mary said, my soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my spirit, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has performed mighty deeds with his arms. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from thrones, but has lifted up the humble. 
He has filled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Like I said, it's a song of praise, book of Luke, Dr. Luke, uh, the physician, uh, with Jesus most of the time, not given credit as an apostle because he wasn't named, but he was, you know, there. He watched firsthand a lot of what unfolded with him, Paul, and so forth, folks. And uh, what a song Mary has. Uh, and if you go through the Old Testament, much of this song, Luke 1, 46 through 453, you're going to see played out in the, just in either Kings and Chronicles, let alone from the uh, um, uh, prophets that follow uh, the Psalms. So, very, uh, I mean, it really uh, hammers home a couple of things there, folks, that caught me. Um, he has brought down rulers from their thrones and has lifted up the humble. I've seen that in my day. He performs mighty deeds. Yeah, I've seen that too, believe it or not, folks. And if you all would be honest with yourselves, you might have realized you witnessed it and missed it kind of weird to say it that way but yeah um, but the one that really hits home for me uh, he has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts that one's a tough one to chew on there folks because that one could be a mirror looking back you looking back at yourself So, while there's a devotion that goes with all of these folks, these verse of the days that I put up, sometimes I take from them and sometimes I don't. Um, and today is just one of those that I'll just take part of it because, I mean, I'll read the whole thing if you'd like, but really, uh, the part that really, we have to be willing to be the servant of Lord like the servant of our Lord like Mary was and offer him praise for our lives from our lips in Jesus the Lord has done great things for us folks it doesn't take much for you to just sit there you know sit there in the word let the word speak to you don't read it no take time through it folks read through it let it sink through because folks it, it it can really grab you sometimes sometimes you may not understand that's fine next time through whoa might happen so but always think about everything that happens in your life good bad indifferent give praise to god I know, I can't give praise on bad things. Yes, you can. You're still alive. You're still able to provide comfort, aid to the situation you're in. Folks, God is always there for you. All you have to do is accept that God is there for you. Have the faith that God has given you. You don't believe me? I've told this story a million times. Why not a million and one? Might be the one that finally sinks in. Um, I can give you the analogy that goes well with this, but folks, um, I want you to look down if you're sitting. Are you sitting in a chair? Well, you've got a lot of faith that that chair was built properly by man and can hold your weight. Take that as an insult. You can take that as whatever you want you've got a lot of faith to believe that chair is holding you up that's faith folks believing in stuff you can't see or can't know yet still believe 
You have it, folks, within you. All it takes is you to stand up, proclaim Jesus as your, as your Savior, as the one who can save you from your sins. And folks, heaven awaits. Repent and turn from those sins, folks, and you will be shocked. It may take time. That's what faith is all about, folks. Believing it's already happened. All right, folks, we are. Uh, I do uh, thank you for those of you listening. I uh, not the greatest preacher. I am not going to even claim to be a preacher, folks. Uh, but I, I try to relay the word of the Lord when I see good verses. I've got some verses written down that I'm working on. Uh, to bring forward so uh, as the Holy Spirit leads me in how to disseminate what I've learned from some Old Testament uh, verses from Ecclesiastes it's a really good book to read there folks in the Bible Ecclesiastes um, wow the vanity of human beings So, but we're headed to Bangladesh here on the Sim, and uh, estimated time of arrival, well, estimated en route time, I should say, just under two hours. So, oh, am I in ATC? No, I am not. I just happened to look at Sim Toolkit, and it looked like I was. All right, so enjoy the ride, folks. Enjoy the music. We'll be there in just under two hours. In about an hour-ish, we'll be back, and we'll start talking through the arrival. Till then, God bless, folks. And uh, I hope those uh, words from our Lord, through Mary, through the Holy Spirit, uh, find a way to resonate this uh, Christmas season. before we get back to enjoy the music I will one more time talk about how to update Felis Polis is in this as well folks they use the uh, skunk craft I think it's called skunk crafts updater um, which by the way there isn't an update which I was shocked for the uh, Tolis yet so Uh, earlier on in the stream, uh, roughly two hours ago, Cadet Rand07 uh, followed. So again, I want to give a shout out to him saying thank you and uh, look forward to seeing you. Uh, Monday is that long haul flight, folks. I am going to classify it. That's not as long as Miami to Anchorage, but 1,500 miles-ish nonetheless. So that'll be Monday, and uh, Christmas week will be coming up. And like I said, then we'll be flying into Israel next week uh, out of the Dubai area. So relax. We'll enjoy the music and see you in about an hour.
All right, folks, uh, we're back with you. Uh, it's not been an hour yet. It's only been about a half hour or so. Uh, we're a little closer to our arrival, about a half hour. You've seen some things going on in the background. I'm just getting frequencies set up to get an idea how far away and all we are. Uh, currently uh, coming up on the fix in our flight plan. Uh, it has it? Well, yeah, it did come up for you. Tossem, T-O-S-E-M, Tango, Oscar, Sierra, Echo, Mike. Then we're going to be heading to Lima, Lima, Pop. That's 1420 up there on the dials. So currently, though, we're just doing some, you know, just some checks off of VOR. Uh, we're using Zyshon. Uh, 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 Sierra Golf Mike. Now, uh, let me bring up some toolkit. I'll give you an idea of what we do here. And, you know, it's just something I do to kind of help pass a little bit of the time on these long hauls. Okay. So, as you can see where we are here on the uh, live map with Sim Toolkit. And I pulled up the wrong one. There we go. Okay. If I zoom in, there's Tossum ahead of us. Down around in about this area is LLP. From there, we'll probably start our descent ish in that area. And we'll hit either the arc or just go straight for the uh, final approach fix. Um, 432 uh, is what I'm thinking right now for our runway. Unfortunately, unless you all know about it out there, I don't know how to look up Deatuses abroad. So, outside U.S. territory, U.S. or U.S. territories. So, but what I've been doing here, let me uh, pull up Navgraph first. Yeah, this hasn't updated yet. Alrighty. Um... But right here, SGM, I've just been kind of, you know, watching where we are relative to it. Um, and watching my gauge here, pointing back at it, because it is back and behind us. So, as we're flying away, that gauge, the RMI gauge, should be moving, as it has been. Tossum, I think, is 93 ahead of us, yeah. So, I've just been kind of watching gauges, and we're now some 90 miles out. We'll probably get our last run at it here. Now, one other thing you can do here, folks. A lot of people don't think about this. Well, of course, it's not going to show up. Okay, there it is. Uh, here's the high one. Okay, so that would have been 243 that we crossed right about here. Um, now, we don't have the uh, radial coming off for the next one. Uh, this right, this nice blue light, actually, it's a, <laughs> never mind, it's a radar territory border. But, uh, we can kind of uh, extrapolate. Now, I can also pull up Jinying 1082 to get Tossin in there as well. I think it's doable. See if it shows up here. Yeah. Uh, whiskey uh, 62. We just don't get a good number out of it like we do here. Yeah, we could even use it. So, and then you've also got Gen Gen Ma here. To get uh, fixes. Matter of fact, I am going to switch to that one. Fourteen, seven. Okay, so that's showing it ahead of us. So zero six one. is trying to see where we are here. Well, next would be, well, uh, 353. 
So once we get that right here, we'll be a toss of turning. And it's just ways to, okay, we're on course and our nav stuff is still working. Because I've seen a couple streams now where, like mine, we lost them. Thankfully, we were able to come in today and we're not going to be as thankful. So, uh, well, we're looking at a pretty good instrument run into there. So, we'll see how things uh, turn out. Now, 1420 here as we've still got this up. That is LLP. Now, I just saw that, and probably you all did too. We're going to fly over 14.1. So let me dial. Oh, that's actually coming in, so that would make sense. So, cool. And that'll be 266. So there you go, folks. Again, it's just some things to do to one, make sure you're on course, and two, keep you a little moving. Because in our world, we're not working like they are, folks. They're working to really make sure the INS is tracking as it should. I mean, you track off in some of these areas, you get into some pretty hostile territory. And I don't mean weather-wise, I'm talking politically. You're flying along can uh, China right here, so. You gotta make sure you fly that route, you're authorized. So, but anyway, folks, sit back, enjoy, about 30 more minutes, and then we'll start talking the arrival.
All right, folks, we're about uh, just under 400 miles from the uh, top of descent. Let me double check. Uh, actually, uh, about 300 miles from top of descent. And if you're in the LIRA or LIR areas, I believe that Italy, they've got some kind of testing going on way ahead of us. Hope y'all are out and enjoying. All right, let's uh, talk getting this FMC set up as well as uh, our F uh, aircraft information for the uh, descent. All right, hang on a second. Uh, got to figure out why we are not. Ah, there it is. And okay, there we go. All right, so let me bring in Sim Toolkit uh, for this. Actually, you know what? No, I'm going to go ahead and do charts. It's charts. And I will be right back, folks. One moment. Folks, my apologies there. Let's get back into this arrival brief, shall we, as we cross over. Uh, where am I here? Wrong place. Uh, Manchi, that's a uh, VOR, that's uh, 11410, as you can see right there. Oh, uh, no, you didn't see my mouse. There you go right here. It's DME 16.5. This is not as confusing as the uh, Fly JSM 727. That can get confusing figuring out which DME to watch. Alright, so as I said, we've got Charts 8 up here. It just updated, by the way, folks. So I'm not sure what all updated other than this changed. But I don't know any of this yet. All right, so today we don't have a star going in here. Oh. Hang on a second to your folks. All right, well, kind of weird, um, but we're going to be basically coming into the arc and just kind of grabbing it and flying it in. So as we look at the chart here, folks, uh, the ATIS will be on this channel. You know, we might try to tune it in when we get uh, a lot closer. Uh, approach tower and ground here's all the frequencies up here but what we concern ourselves with is what I call line two this is our this is a VOR approach that's why it looks weird hang on a second how did that get me? I 
I think I know how I did that now. There we go. Try that again. Oh, that's what I did. Sorry about that, folks. I thought I had things uh, better set up here. We'll just plan. I'm just going to do this the old fashioned way, sorry folks, let's just pull up the chart I want. Where were these when I looked earlier? Okay. Here's the arc, and here's the straight-in version. All right, now we do have this one. We'll go ahead and tick it off. Um, what we're going to fly, and I do apologize. Wow, I didn't realize we had this thing all loosed up. I really want to look at it. Oh. So we'd come in, do a procedure turn. Back. All right, let's keep it kind of simple here, folks. Let's, uh, There we go. We're going to fly the ILS-2, runway 32, uh, VOR DME ILS. So that'll take us out to 12 miles out and bring us in. All right. So as I was saying, here's the frequencies for ATC. This is the line we really uh, want to pay attention to in the briefing. Uh, 108.5. That's our localizer. So we'll set that here on nav one. Final approach course 324. We'll set here in the course on the captain's side. All right. Now our decision altitude. Okay. That comes in at six miles. Uh, that's not a decision altitude. Correction. Glide slope. Uh, 1930 MSL. 1,900 feet above the ground. Our decision height and altitude there, down below the minimum section. Okay, so we want to make sure we're on that glide slope at 1,930 MSL. Airport's 27 feet above sea level. Okay, it's a pretty simple missed approach. We come back to DACA and then we'll fly the ILS. Uh, one for category D aircraft to come back in. Okay, transition level 6,000, actually 4, 000, 6 to 4,000. I'll probably do it at 18 so I don't forget. Um, in the real world, you would do it at either 6,000 or 4,000. 
All right, so what we'll be doing, folks, is we're going to come off LLP for a little bit, and then we're going to finally turn and head for the initial come in, shoot the approach. That's how we're going to do it. So we're going to come in over 12, DME 12 from DAC, DACA, VOR. Track it in. At distance 6, we should have descended at 2,000 feet. We should meet up with it uh, somewhere between the 9 and the 6 DME. And then we'll track it down. Missed approach point is uh, for our performance D303. So at 303 AGL, we're about where I have. Actually, I'm just going to put it about right there. Uh, we'll get the audible. We better see a runway. If not, we go this approach. And today is a fun day because we need at least 1,200 meters. Uh, we had a we're at 1,500 right now. So looks we're going to come down pretty close to minimums before we see that runway. Yippee Kaye. <laughs> What's the uh, ceiling that we even have? No, don't. All right, so there's not even a uh, indication of a ceiling, so who knows what we're getting into here. Uh, so 1,200 full. Uh, we're going to have ALS with Pappies on the left side. There's our missed approach. So, folks, like I said, this is going to be fun, to say the least. All right, so let's put it in here. So we go to departure. We uh, see how this looks for y'all. Okay, great. So we go to uh, departure arrival. VGHS, click ARR. Next page, ILS. be fun folks that is guaranteed all right quick look at the other one 249 miles out all right so lastly i want to go through the calculations here at this point all right uh airport airport Okay, we're coming into a 10,000, we'll call it 527, so zero, three, two, four.
All right, so currently, flaps 30 is what we're going to shoot. Uh, our V ref is 133. Go ahead and set up our auto brakes when we're ready to medium. Give us about halfway down the runway. So hopefully if we can touch down right here, we can get off of Charlie and taxi in. And being cargo, we'll aim for 14 or 15 as our parking spot and uh, see what's available. Again, oh, by the way, the DME numbers are coming off of DACA, B-O-R, not the ILS. All right, so how much further off DACA, B-O-R is 0.5, so 12.5 is what will be at the initial here. Okay, but we will be six from the runway here. Okay, all right, so a lot of interesting stuff. Let's go ahead, get the bug set. There we go. They are now set up for our arrival. Fun times ahead of us, folks. So hope you enjoy. Uh, we've got a pretty good instrument approach uh, coming up. Uh, tell your friends, put your predictions in. Uh, I guess I'll start it. And there's the format for you folks. Yeah, we are 200 miles, okay. All right. So I'll kind of stay a little quiet here, a little longer, folks. Feel free to put your predictions in. Again, it's the exclamation mark, the word predict, space and a negative number. And uh, we'll be back in just a couple minutes.
All right, folks. Uh, got about uh, 40 or so minutes to go to arriving at Dhaka. Um, we are coming into what I call low instrument. Actually, I think the FAA actually calls it L. Uh, low for, low for, L low for? Low instrument meteorological conditions. Uh, we are barely above minimums. Uh, minimums for us in Class D is 1,200 meters. We're at 1,500 meters. Uh, so hopefully, yes, that means we're going to try the auto land on this, folks. So, uh, uh, oh, looks like I did get to Hawker in time. He's going for a 108. Good. Good to have you aboard. I know you're at work. Bored probably at work. So, hey, you get to watch us come into a really uh, close to minimums approach. <laughs> Give you an idea before I know you got to get back to work there, sir. And again, 1,200 meters is our minimum. <laughs> That's what I figured, but I thought you'd uh, like to get a flavor of it. <laughs> so, but anyway, folks, yeah, like Hawker said, if you miss it, um, I do put these up on YouTube, the good, the bad, the ugly, including the crash at uh, uh, Fairbanks a couple days ago, so... Uh, that's the one I allude to that the trim went out on it. I could not trim the aircraft whatsoever. So, Zebo 737. So, let's see with the updated Felis aircraft what we could do in the Dhaka. Like I said, now standing uh, top of descent. Oh, one, one too many. 151 miles out. We're going to update the uh, landing performance here at 100 and go from there. Game plan is um, probably best. Yeah. Uh, best to view it this way. We're going to be coming in, as you see, LLP right here then top of descent probably LLP is when I'll actually put her in uh, altitude select and start down um, we'll probably divert here to our uh, initial and come in that way Ooh, somebody just popped up maybe down I'm not sure where that is I was thinking maybe uh, Bangkok but I think I'm too far north but, uh, and then we'll uh, shoot the approach, folks. We're going to be right on the numbers speed-wise, hopefully, and everything. And uh, we'll see how she auto-lands. And uh, once we start on the approach, like I alluded to earlier, if you click right here, you'll get the uh, wheels back. All right. So, little ways to go, folks, about... 40 miles till we update our performance figures, get the latest greatest in here, and then get ready for the for a fun time as we go into LIFR, L-I-F-R, or Low instru Instrument Meteorological Conditions. Only if I was flying for FedEx would I get credit for that. Just about every approach I flew for them was in Liffer so that I could be rated for Cat C approaches. All right, and so enjoy the music for about another 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll uh, get things updated and ready for descent.
Alright folks, as promised, we're about a hundred or so miles from the official top of descent. I'm going to probably start around that 70 mark ahead of us. All I'm going to do here is just update weather information for the most part into here. We'll keep it damp. Uh, yeah, let's keep it. Uh, I'm going to go if I go wet. Let's keep it damp. Uh, temperature. Don't think we've seen much change here. We're still 21 and 21. Uh, we got fog now reported by them. Okay, I just saw it in the forecast. Where was it? No sky conditions. Uh, yes, fog. So, we are gonna be, uh, 1400 is still being reported. And uh, 280 at three. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. Okay. And uh, let me pull up some toolkit here. Weather 2985. Okay. All right. So. And actually, the uh, traffic in uh, Dhaka has actually uh, picked up. Uh, UPS is inbound. And uh, we have somebody on the ground there. So we'll see uh, what we get. All right, so we've uh, updated. Let me uh, just do something here real quick. Still looking at 133. Yeah, we'll go with damn 58.43. All right. So we'll come up here. folks <clears throat> still got a pretty brisk wind let's see what uh... seventy nine pretty much off the nose seventy nine okay giving us about a ground speed of four eleven all right All right, so top of descent. To me, run one easy Z. Yes, it's to me worth buying. Um, uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy flying in the uh, atmosphere instead of by table which uh, is how Microsoft does it. Although they're getting better, I'll give them that, but you fly an X-plane, it's a whole, you know, you're feeling the plane. Um, so uh, it's it gives you a good run for your money. Now, um, get ready for the uh, little bit of the, you know, getting used to new keys and all of that, but it's a great sim. Uh, so you'd be worth checking it out. And we are now 46 miles. I'm actually going to do the calculations here. Uh, let's see. Um, come up here. Wrong one. Uh, distance out. 185 miles. Let's see, we're going to be leaving 38,000. So we need 36 times. Three plus fifteen, so about 123 miles out of Dhaka. 
Let's go ahead and plug that in for the time being. 112.7. And, uh, did I come up with... So we're about to start our way down. Well, good to hear. Uh, give it a try. I'd love to hear you report back your uh, initial thoughts on it. I've flown it now for three years prior to that. By the way, when I switched over is when Musfus Microsoft 2020 came out. Uh, my computer that I had FSX on for quite a while memoried out on me where I couldn't do anything and uh, bought a new computer, switched over to X-Plane. I'm not going back to, to Microsoft. So, Prior to that, FSX, Century of Flight, Flight Sim 2002, 2000, and uh, might have had 98 as well. So, yes, I was a diehard Microsoft fan. Came across the new computer, X-Plane 12 or 11, and that was the end of Microsoft with And then listening to the reviews coming in when Musfus came out. Oh, I candy wise the reviews were great. True flight simmers, not so great. Took uh, quite a while to get them brought around. So, and some of them still haven't, so. All right, enough on that though. Uh, we're, we're here in the present in X-Plane and uh, enjoying it to death. All right, we are about to start down. Okay, as soon as I come across LLP is when I think I'll set up for descent. The, okay, if you've done X-Plane 11, the big thing you're going to see different here is some of the scenery. Um, the clouds are no longer two-dimensional. They are three. Now, granted, we're nowhere near clouds right now to show that off. Well, let me take a look real quick while well, we got about 20 miles here. So they're more of a 3D look to them. Yeah, we're too high to get to see them fully. Um, hopefully as we come down you'll get the 3D but we're in a uh, flat out atmosphere there in uh, Bangladesh so I don't know if we'll see any of the 3D but that's one of the big things that came with 12 was this getting the clouds more 3D look and they over the betas and release clients, they have achieved that. We, if you can go back to the beginning of the stream, you'll see it coming out of uh, uh, Hong Kong. If not, uh, I haven't done it. I need to put that up there. But uh, check out our YouTube videos. You can see it there too. That's one of the big changes between 11. Scenery-wise, they have improved a lot. Uh, you get a lot of the, what I call, monument landmarks, like the Gateway Arch, the Eiffel Tower, um, and things like that for you to VFR hone in on. Those things have been more introduced into it. Um, kind of like how Century of, uh, Century of Flight got rid of all of that because they got branded as part of the cause of 9-11, which no, they weren't. Um, 
the jerky politicians that did that. Um, they're starting to put them back in, and very grateful for them. All right, and I uh, hope uh, that helps you out. You will definitely, with release candidate five, uh, really see a difference vegetation-wise. Uh, they always say go to um, Innsbruck. That's a great place to see how the changes. Okay, four miles. So be, uh, okay, we're doing 418. Bring it down to 10 for now. Then at that point, I'll kind of begin to work my way over to the ILS. All right, so. Okay, let's flip the switch to select. And uh, this is by far one of my favorite planes. It was available for 11, but uh, oh, it's to switch to VS. Okay, let me bring this up. Just kind of waiting for the speed to kind of catch up to where I'm at. Then we'll switch into indicated for now. And we'll use not the pitch of the aircraft, but the thrust. Okay, back into speed. All right, checklist time. All right, descent. Seat belts, no smoking, we never turned those off. Exterior lights at 10,000. We've already got the auto brake set. We'll worry about the radios and a little bit further down the descent. Flight directors are set, and brake pressure, spoilers will get armed, and the rest of this fine. All right. Just a tad bit steep. Okay, we're 95 miles out. The 
again, folks, on the uh, timer here. Had about five, six minutes. It took me a while to get to it, so might even be a little longer. To, you know, no more than ten. So we've been going for about three hours, 15, 20 minutes. So fly time, stream time, we've been running right at about four hours. Take a look back there, see what we can see. Help to hit the right key. Yeah, it looks awful clear out there, folks see what we get when we get closer. I think as we cross into the uh, Bangladesh uh, airspace, we'll make our turn Hard part is knowing the that or maybe fly my own fifteen or so mile arc down to come in. That might be what I do. We're just about there with 12 minutes, a little over 12 to go. You know, of course, always pad about five minutes to it because we're going to have to swing in for the approach. But we'll be there shortly, folks. Again, Nav 2 is set to DACA. We're going to go ahead and set up for the ILS on Nav 1. 108.5. All right, folks. All right, so we are now uh, 67 miles out of VOR, which is half a mile south and east of the uh, airfield. So, really curious what kind of weather we're to be uh, heading into, do not mistake. Oh, there's an airport. <laughs> wow. I remember my first run into El Alto didn't have that on the chart. Don't mistake this airport. El Alto, and guess what? I mistaked it. 
<laughs> okay, we're about through 20,000 on our way to the ILS. Here, let's do this town. All right, folks, I'll be right back and we'll get into the final approach information. All right, folks, we're back with you. We're about 16,000 feet above this, the surface and uh, headed for 10,000. Like I said, we're going to do our best to just fly a very basic and simple 15 mile arc off the, uh, hopefully off the ILS. Uh, if not, we'll switch up to DACA and run off that. about we do this. Uh, about guts one, two, seven. Alright, so we are now switched to uh, VOR flying. Hopefully that wasn't a mistake. Alright, now at this altitude I want to go ahead and bring us back to 280 as we're about to start leveling off. And I am going to go ahead and cease the music. While we still have 36 miles to go,
That way we can uh, try our best here. For now, we'll slow to 250. I think at the river, just prior to the river, is where we're going to turn. Not seeing this fog yet. That's cool. And we'll keep it at 250 for now. 30 miles out. Okay, let's, yeah, we're going to have to. All right, let's continue. We'll come down to 5,000. Actually, I'm going to slow to 240. Cabin crew, prepare for landing. Okay, I'm going to get a little closer. Like I said, I want to try to fly a 15-mile arc to this airport. All right, we are now 20, inside 20 miles, folks. Okay, I'm going to have to set it 108.5. Oh, I can't. Dang it. Stupid me. All right, we're going to switch to heading. Now we can set it. 085. Inbound cones 324. Okay, I'm going to turn due south.
okay, I'm starting to see it now. <laughs> I think I'm seeing what we're going to be running into. All right, so again, goal is to try to maintain between 12 and 15 miles out. Okay, we're set 324, DME 14.5, okay. Approach checklist, please. Seat belts and shoulder harness. Check. Seat belts and no smoking signs. On. Handy eyes. Off. Exterior lights. Check. Auto brakes. Medium. Radio INS switches. Radio. Flight director computer selectors. Check. Brake pressure. Check. Spoilers. Mm. Meters. One zero one. Twenty five hundred. EPR and airspeed bugs. Set and cross check. Seat belts and shoulder harness. Check. Fuel panel. Check. Fuel heat. Off. EPR computer. Go around. Cabin altitude. Check. Circuit breakers. Check. Approach checklist completed. Flaps one. Okay, folks, here we go, making the turn. Okay, so far so good. Visibility looks good. Localizer alive. Flaps 10. Well, that's my question right now, too. Where is this low visibility? I have a feeling... I don't know. I'm not even going to speculate. I don't even see the runway yet, though, so... 10 miles out. All right, ignition. Wait a minute, that's not what I wanted. 133. Okay. Starting to think I see a runway, but 
<clears throat> There's the glide slope, folks. Gear down. Flaps 25, flaps 30. Landing checklist, gear, down and check, down and check, flaps, flaps 30, flaps 30, ignition, flight start, and escape, check, altimeters. Zero, one, one, set and cross check. Landing checklist completed. All right, folks, flaps thirty set, checklists complete. Please make sure your seatbelt is securely Five hundred. No low visibility here, folks. Four hundred. Approaching minimums. Landing. Minimums. Three hundred. Two hundred. One hundred. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Check reverse. Well, looks like we go to the end, folks. Oh, wow. <laughs> what did you... I forgot what you put in there, uh, Hawker. I'd have to go back and look. Was it 180 or something like that? One oh eight. Oh, it was close. I mean, <laughs> all right. So here we go, folks. Getting ready to taxi to the gate after uh, looks like about a two hundred uh, foot a minute landing, folks. In a seven forty seven, that's really good. Kind of shocked to see a precision runway with an ILS. All right, we are clear of the runway. DACA traffic, uh, Cafe 104 heavy, clear, 32. All 
Alright, so let's clean her up, shall we? Flaps one. Really? I thought I had it all the way up there. Flaps up. Alright. Alrighty, so here we go. Taxiing over here to the ramp. I think the cargo area isn't this first area we see here. Let's get that ignition off. Okay. Just kind of reading it and doing it at the same time. Flaps are up. Oops, stabilizer. Yeah. There go. And uh, we need to get down here. Cargo heat off. Okay, we got the EP started. All righty. See what I missed. After landing checklist. Brake pressure. Check. Boarding and steering. Arm. Out of brakes. Off. Ignition. Off. Engine and wing and the ice. Off. Radar and transponder. Stand by. Flaps. Up. Spoilers. Down. Now, well, looks like we're going to be parking out here, folks. Then I'll change up and head to like 16 or 17.
Parking brake set. Parking brake released. Cockpit to ground. Put the chocks on. All right, so she's chalked. She shouldn't go anywhere now. Um, all right, so let's uh, get this uh, shutdown started. Okay, next one. Okay, we've got a little work to do up here. We'll go to a line. Okay. Disarm slides. the gens so we can start shutting them down. All right, secure cockpit checklist. Brakes. Hold on. Beacon lights. Hmm. Well, Hawker, if you're still out there, uh, Mac Air had faith in me the way you did, and they had me at 101 feet a minute. All right, so uh, they're filed. We get up here, shut the beacon off. Off. INS. Align. Probe and window heat. Off. Back files. Check. Fuel boost pumps. Ah, uh, this. Reserve tank valves. Ghost. Hydraulic panel. Check. Oxygen. Check. Flight recorder. Let's see. You got an engine still running? Well, we're going to skip that. Usually that turns off. Emergency lights. Yeah, 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 I know. Off. Radar. Off. INS. Let's see. They want it off now. Off. Let's see. Radio switches. Check was completed. All right. There you go, folks. We are in the blocks here in Bangladesh. Uh, not really sure where this uh, METARs are coming from or why, more importantly, unless let's... Uh, check this out now that we're secure and I 
5.87 I what is the they don't say the time on it and it's 2986 we came in 2985 so obviously there is still that lag so all right well folks we had a great time flying in here um, get off everything here make sure nobody is tracking us in here okay it does not appear so so we'll disconnect from there and you know what I think it's time we haven't done this in a while folks well we haven't had a chance to <laughs> um, we're going to go ahead take a look at this landing again uh, it's something I like doing uh, mainly because one X plane can do it. Microsoft can do it. You just have to one get an get a download. I don't know if it's free or pay. Set it up before the approach or before where you want it to record in order for you to play it back. We, on the other hand, can start right when the sim put us in uh, uh, Hong Kong all the way to the end. So in this case, we're looking at over four hours, roughly four and a half hours of uh, recorded time. But first, we have to look at Sim Toolkit. Uh, folks, if you don't have this utility, shame on you, it's free. Yeah, you heard me right, folks. It's free. It's good for MusFuss, good for X-Plane, good for whoever flight simming is with. And I mean, it's a free utility, and you don't hear free often. A little more in X-Plane than you do MusFuss, but it's free, folks, and uh, gives a lot of information at your fingertips. Streamers, you get the overlay you see at the top, plus a lot of other stuff so it's free folks can't stress having it enough all right so looking at a uh, good old sim toolkit let's first uh, see that yeah we're clear and we're off 204 was our landing okay let's go up to flight summary and finish the flight okay now, all you got to do to do this, folks, is click on the last flight, click View Details. From that last flight, click Full Landing Report. Yeah, you got a little bit, but you get a lot here. Now, see, this shows a precision runway. Why we didn't see that outside, I don't know. Okay, so, you know, the scenery may not be 100%, but uh, it is in probably an area you know, overlooked a lot. So it looks like military is here too. See the alert shacks. I know I saw the uh, aircraft hangared over there. Kind of looking. But anyway, that would have been that way on the runway all right anyway back to what we were doing i got a sidetrack there here's what our heading was here's the ideal heading the big numbers here folks threshold is the big white line back here at the beginning you land in here forward guess what no guarantees you'll have landing gear after it uh, but from the white line on, that's the threshold start of usable landing runway. Now, precision runways have these hash marks. 
this is a precision runway with hello and ILS. <laughs> That's a precision approach. All right, so you got your threshold here. Every 500 feet, you have marks. It's kind of like a golf course, as I remember. I haven't golfed in a long time, but as I remember, golf courses are marked off so you have an idea how far away from the uh, T you are, or from the green you are. Using bushes. Here, we use painted marks on the runway. Uh, so if you cross this, that's fine, you know, you can land here. This is called the landing zone where these hash marks are. Realize you're 7,000 feet or less. Visually, we aim for these big marks right here. Okay. Visually, when I pop out of the clouds, well, <laughs> when I don't, I don't pop out of the clouds in the real world, folks. I'm just a private pilot. If I'm popping out of clouds, well, uh, if I, you didn't hear that. No, I don't fly lately, folks. <laughs> yeah, if I pop out of the clouds, that's a big no-no. <clears throat> so, but anyway, so we aim for this point here, roughly 1,000 feet down the runway. And you can see, I did that pretty much. 1,600 feet down, 4 feet right of the center line. That, folks, is a great landing. I don't care what the rest of the numbers are. That's what the pilots see. That's what they know. Now, they feel how bad the landing is in the seat. But right there tells me fantastic landing. Let alone, we come back, 144. I think we were 133. So we were, we were still pushing the 140s for the approach. So that's why. But, hey, not bad. 204 and 100, uh, one point, uh 0.5 G's on the landing. So, folks, it was a good landing. However, let's uh, get rid of Sim Toolkit. Enough chit-chat, and let's get out there and see it. As promised. Ah, oh, it's going to crash the desktop. Doggone it. Well, it happens. as I like to say in that situation. Oh, well, folks. Well, let's go ahead, though, and start up some music. And, uh, folks, there she went. Crash to desktop. Submitting the report so they know. Sent and okay. Well, you know what happens. Folks, it is in beta still, so we're going to have these issues from time to time. Maybe the chalk's in is what caused it. I don't know. But anyway, folks, I want to say thank you to everyone that uh, came along to support the stream, uh, especially uh, Cap, uh, what was his name? Cadet Rand 07. Thank you for the follow. Uh, look forward to seeing you all on our next scheduled stream Monday when we take off from Bangladesh. Headed to not Dubai International, but the other airport in the Dubai city area. A lot of the cargo carriers are working their way to that airport. So look forward to seeing y'all. That is going to be even longer than this one. So pack a lunch. Um, so folks, I hope y'all have a great day. God bless you all. And uh, like I said, we hope to see you Monday.